Pierre is a nine year old boy with mild hemophilia, having a fat rate uh, concentration in the blood of approximately 12 percentage. So anything in the range of five to 50 percent is considered to be mild hemophilia. Present the emergency department at 9 p.m. for evaluation of left hip pain. Subscribe and press the bell icon so you never miss an update from Prep Ladder. Pierre is a nine-year-old boy with mild hemophilia, having a fat rate uh, concentration in the blood of approximately 12 percentage. So anything in the range of five to 50 percent is considered to be mild hemophilia. Present the emergency department at 9 p.m. for evaluation of left hip pain. He has rarely had bleeding episodes in the past and not on prophylactic factor infusion at home. On eliciting trauma history, he says that he fell off bicycle the previous day. He did not have much pain last night, but the pain increased throughout the day and is now unable to bear weight on his left leg. On examination, his vital signs are stable. He is unable to stand on his left leg, lies on the table with hip flexed and thighs externally rotated. He has some paresthesias down the medial aspect of the thigh. Patient can both internally as well as externally rotate his hip, but cannot extend his hip. Weight is 35 kg. A CBC shows a white blood cell count of 6000. Platelet is 250,000. Hemoglobin is 8.7. That probably because of bleeding. What are the most appropriate tests to diagnose this condition? And how should this condition be treated? Remember, first of all, you might think it's a hip hemarthrosis, hip joint hemarthrosis, but this is not a hip joint hemarthrosis because patient can both internally as well as externally rotate the hip, so which is extremely unlikely in a patient with a hip joint problem. But this patient, on the other hand, is having a hip flexion attitude at presentation and the thighs are externally rotated. And apart from that, the patient can rotate internally and externally but cannot extend the hip. This is a classic history of iliopsoas bleed and in patients who are having sepsis you can think about iliopsoas abscess also but nevertheless so this is an iliopsoas problem it's an iliopsoas bleed it's an hematoma it's an emergency even more than hemarthrosis so to find out the iliopsoas bleed i need to do a ct scan first even though you can find out an ultrasound but you need a lot of expertise for that ct will be the best investigation so you're going to perform a ct scan and of course this question is also asking about the dosage of factor 8 so what will be the dosage of factor 8? It depends on whether you're dealing with a major bleed or you're dealing with a minor bleed. Minor bleed means you're talking about minor surgeries or hemarthrosis. Major bleed means you're talking about major surgeries or uh, conditions like intramuscular hematoma or intracranial bleed. Like what is happening in this guy? In this guy, you are uh, dealing with the iliopsoas bleed, which is a intramuscular hematoma, which is a major bleed. So how will you combat major bleeds? You need to maintain factor levels at 100 percentage that's very very important so how will you maintain factor at 100 percent levels the first dose should be at least 50 units per kilogram then only you can maintain at 100 percent factor levels and subsequent doses will be dependent on factor levels that you're going to test again and again if you don't want to test the factor levels again and again because of some affordability issues then probably uh, you can give half the dose as BID till the bleeding stops. Then you can give half the dose every 48 hours for at least 10 to 14 days. At least for a total of 10 to 14 days. Which means in patients with major bleeds like this, you need to maintain factor levels for at least 10 to 14 days at 100 percentage and for minor bleeds we have to maintain at least 50 percent of the factor levels you have to maintain factor levels at at least 50 percentage and this should be done for at least three to five days so the initial first dose in patients with hemarthrosis will be 25 units per kilogram of factor 8 concentrate and then subsequent doses will be almost similar uh, to what you have de dealt with the major bleeding. And apart from that, what about factor 9 deficiency? If you are dealing with a factor 9 deficiency, it's also called as hemophilia B, uh, the dosing will be a little different. So in case of major bleeds, the dosing will be 
100 to 120 units per kilogram. And if you're dealing with a minor bleed or hemarthrosis, the dosing will be 50 to 60 units per kilogram. As you can see, the dosage will be slightly double that of the factor 8. So this patient is having a major bleed and having a factor 8 deficiency. So, of course, I'm going to perform a CT. Plus, at the same time, initially, I'm going to give a dose of 1,750 units because this patient's weight is somewhere around 35 kilograms. So, 35 times 50 units will be 1,750. And then it will be followed by half the dose, that is 875 units, uh, 12th hourly, until the patient is asymptomatic or the bleeding stops, then followed by 875 units every 48 hours for a total of 14 days. That will be the right answer for this question.